Welcome to Civilian Tactical Soviet Edition. Today we have a round so effective it borders on a war crime. The famous 7N6 poison bullet. So how on earth is this not against the Geneva Conventions? Why is it called a poison bullet? And is plain old 556 NATO going to be more effective? So where does the poisonous 7N6 bullet come from? Well, the parent is just a regular 545 by 39, but it's got some extra special sauce in there. 545 by 39 is fired out of the AK-74, just a variant of the AK-47. And as you're gonna notice right here, this thing has no recoil to speak of, or at least very minimal recoil. Now there's good reason this thing's called a poison bullet and we have our ballistics gelatin to show you, but how on earth is this not a war crime? Well, you see the Geneva Conventions say that you shouldn't have bullets that are all low point or that explode on impact causing ridiculous fragmentation and injury. They want you to use stuff like this, just a regular round of ammunition that zips straight through the target and causes one wound channel to appear. And that's where the 7N6 poison bullet was invented. It has a steel core, which is technically a penetrator core, to hit through mild steel like steel helmets. However, due to the unique geometry and stabilization on impact, this bullet tumbles like wild, but it doesn't fragment, meaning it's technically not against the Geneva Convention. The result is a bullet that can do some wild damage similar to a hollow point, but technically it's a solid bullet. So how much does this thing tumble in yaw compared to a regular round of five 545 by 39. Well, we have our ballistics gelatin. First up, we are gonna shoot the regular round of 545 and then the poison bullet. I'm actually gonna put an extra block of ballistics gelatin behind this to capture it if it veers off. First up, boring 545 by 39. Regular 545, we punched right in the front there and popped out with a straight hole out of the back. Not surprising, just like a normal bullet, but now for the poison bullet. Firing. Reviewing that slow-mo, you could see the bullet came in, tumbled into the table, then skipped out the back of the gel. With an entry hole in the top and no exit out the back, this thing's tumbling like nuts. But let's see if a clear block will give us a better view. And through some miracle, I think we caught it in one block of ballistics gelatin, which is the ideal scenario. That means it dumped all of its energy in about 14 and a half inches. And you can see it looks like it tumbled as wide as possible, cutting a wound channel as long as the bullet. And if my predictions are right, the bullet will be right here. In my history of ballistics gelatin, I don't think I've ever seen this before. I sliced the block in half so you guys can see the cross section of the impact. The bullet zipped in about four inches and then created a massive cavitation at which point Point, it tumbled sideways, slicing like a knife. It then stopped penetrating right here and didn't punch out the block, and I can find no bullet anywhere. It's not even in the end of the block that we chopped off. So this thing tumbles a ton. It's so erratic I couldn't even find it. Maybe we'll catch one when we pit it up against the 556. So how much energy will that 7N6 poisonous bullet impart on a five gallon water jug versus regular 545 by 39? Let's go rapid fire. First up, the regular round. Second up, our poison bullet. Three, two, one. Though unfortunately out of the frame of our slow-mo, the poison bullet launched water about two times higher than our regular 545 by 39 bullet. Now let's test this thing against 556, but what are the cons to this 545 by 39 poison ammunition? Well, number one is going to be availability and price. It's just gonna be a little bit harder to find and a little bit more pricey because, well, it's got some pretty awesome capabilities. Second, this is gonna be extremely corrosive for your firearm. It's gonna rust and corrode the interior of the barrel and that bolt. And for people like me who never clean their rifles, this is a big annoyance because, yeah, now I'm gonna to have to clean this thing. Now let's put it up against NATO 556 green tip because the 545 by 39 poison bullet is actually armor piercing. So I think this is the closest you can actually get to the 5.56 variation of the same bullet. And of course, before we do, a word from our sponsors. A massive thank you to our sponsors, Ammo Squared, who will take care of all of your ammo stacking needs when you begin to run low on ammunition. And they automate it, making it very easy. Make sure to tell Ammo Squared that Civilian Tactical sent you, that's Ammo Squared. And next up, we have 945 Industries, who makes awesome off-body carry bags. I've been using my 945 Industries bag for over a year. Unironically, use code BAG10 to get 10% off at 945 Industries. Let's get back to our experimentation. Now we're right back into it. Three, two, one, firing. 
You guys color me impressed. I shot our ballistics gelatin twice with that green tip 556 because I didn't believe the results. The first time we got this wound cavity right here and the second time we got this guy. The bullet came in about four inches and then tumbled insanely causing massive cavitation before exiting out the back. 545 by 39, firing. All right, you guys, that 5.56 five, looks look pretty good, but I do have to amend my statement after we dissected the block from the 5.45 five by 39 and cut it in half. The wound cavity is insane. This was not created with my knife. This is the natural wound cavity from the bullet and the expansion alone. As for the bullet, we did not catch it in the ballistics gelatin. Instead, it barely popped out. And there you can see the end of the bullet itself. The molten lead just got squeezed out like a tube of toothpaste, but it did not fragment. It stayed in one piece. The 545 by 39 dumps all of its energy in a shorter period of time, in my opinion, making it more deadly. And if you subscribe for more, this won't be the last time we see each other.